my so let's start with the agenda we'll talk about the introduction the backfill capability the journey uh, the f architecture and then we'll do some of the component deep dive and at the end we want to take the q &A. if you grown up in 80s and 90s you might be able to recollect the picture which is on the right this is a cassette player tape recorder and uh, if you have to listen to your favorite song which is in the fifth track what you used to do you used to fast forward from one to five quickly and then resume from fifth track if you wanted to again listen to fifth track you have to replay it back go back again do the fast forward and again resume from the fifth song why this is important the iteration i just talked about and the fast forward you will figure it out in the backfill slide why this experience was important okay so let's talk about the intuit ml platform i just took a snippet of the ml platform focusing the uh, how the data is flowing there will be a similar flow uh, data flow for analytics platform as well but today we are going to focus on the ml platform so on the extreme left hand side you see the application is generating the data real time and the batch data real time data is coming to kafka now couple of terminology um, i can set it up like uh, we call it the event bus and intuit it call it you know uh, event bus which is backed up by kafka and the data lake is backed up by s3 stream processing platform is backed up by apache beam and um, spark so sometimes we might use this term interchangeably kafka event bus data lake s3 okay um so in this picture application is generating the real time data which is coming to kafka and also the batch data is going to s3 that is a phase 1 phase 2 which is in the red box that is the intuit data processing processing platform is comprises of stream and patch and this platform is primarily responsible to generate the feature so these are our featureization platform okay which is reading the stream data and the batch data converting it to feature calculating the feature and then in the third phase is stored the feature into feature store so we have offline feature store if you see the the top um, line offline feature store is used for model training and then it gets stored into model repository and online store is used for the model inference the way you can read it the, the bottom line is that you can start from the right mode application that is asking for a prediction model execution service is asking for the feature from the feature store and is returning back the model score okay and one more thing to note is the real time kafka is being backed up by s3 so you know we have our job which will archive the data okay now on the next slide this is like the intuit ml ecosystem on the next slide i will talk about the customer flow you know the customer journey uh, in terms of the model uh, evolution and feature evolution okay so if you see the top horizontal line that is the line how you evaluate the model right so you start with the exploring data then you create the feature then you create the model train model what i show in the previous slide deploy model evaluate model now after the evolution if the performance is not uh, as per your expectation then you can go back to any of the previous step right you can go back to explore data or you can go back to feature um, create feature so the iteration is required in the model evolution same thing if i zoom in the create feature that box so transform the source data source data is real time and historical then calculate the feature now while calculating the feature you might have a stateful features for example count of visitor and that state you want to store it to somewhere so this state okay then you save features to your feature store like for our case online and offline store and then you evaluate the feature again in the evaluation something is off or you wanted to revisit the algorithm or you wanted to uh, increase the model if essentially you wanted to reload the data so in this case use cases you the main thing is that you want to replay the data right so the platform should support replaying the historical data so what platform should support number one the data should be there right the real time data should be backed up by archive location for our case it was s3 and the platform should give you the faster iteration again to emphasize the word faster iteration right so that's why you know during the evolution process i'm just giving the example within two days we load two years of data historical data right and then you can do the faster iteration okay 
so let's talk about a customer problem if i were a head of the data scientist and machine learning engineer so what i'm trying to do i try to boost up the stateful feature so i will clarify this terminology but there is no way to process historical data followed by the real time data in the same pipeline we are just talking about the beam here because the platform only support reading from one type of source at a time number one number two you cannot change the topology you cannot have the pipeline first read from s3 archive location and then you cannot have the same pipeline read from kafka because if the topology will get changed it cannot record from the state which makes me feel unproductive and stuck now let's talk about the ideal state so in ideal state platform should hide all the complexity what are the complexity we are talking about is connecting to dual source connecting to um, archive location connecting to real time location and automatically after archive process is done then automatically switch to stream all this complexity platform should handle right so the biggest benefit what is the biggest benefit is i can do quickly iteration you know quickly exploration i can do in the low cost which make me feel productive and efficient what is the customer impact is cost effective we will talk about the why is cost effective because we have explored the external state you know like redis before now we figured out this approach is more cost effective so cost effective and efficient stateful feature engineering that will be the customer impact now let's talk about what is the backfill um i will stress on some of the feature like you know why the backfill has to be fast and you know why the backfill has to march to stream in the next slide okay so how the backfill work if you focus on this um, this uh, graph even time is in the uh, x axis and processing time in the y axis if you see the black dot that is the ideal time that means you know x equal to y that means when the event is happening the processing is happening at the same time which is too optimistic so let's think of the purple line which is a real line right so that means when the event is happening processing is happening maybe in a millisecond or second day okay so in some processing time this blue line is at the backfill line and if you see the orange dot that is the backfill start time so let's think of in some processing time which is probably today november 18 940 am we started loading two years of event time okay so we are processing two years of data so the blue line has to eventually catch up with the purple line right so the backfill has to match with the stream now that is the reason the backfill has to be fast enough so as you know it's more inclined to event time that means in a small processing time you are catching up more event time it needs to be faster it needs to be more throughput because eventually it has to be merged to streaming line and that should be as soon as possible right um, so practically you know we have processed two years worth of click stream data in three to four days so it has to be that fast uh this graph to show you why the backfill has to be fast and how it will catch up with the stream in the next slide we'll talk about the backfill type okay two types stateless and stateful stateless replay historical data to produce a historical result okay the example uh if you have a feature which is extracting the user id or extracting the um, query parameter from the url or referrer uh, url um that is a stateless feature so how can you do that there are several ways you can do it but we are just showing one one way you can have two separate pipeline pipeline one which will process the historical data and pipeline two which will process the stream data now this pipeline doesn't have to be same technology one can be on spark or sql one can be on uh, beam so they can be completely separate system because it doesn't have to store the state what is the common in this pipeline the common is that the same okay and if you have a idempotent sync then even is better you run the historical pipeline once is finish you switch to the stream pipeline and if there is little duplicate coming the idempotent um, sync will take care now what is stateful stateful is replay historical data to build the state we'll talk about what is the state in the next slide and join with the stream in a unified pipeline here the what unified is very important because whenever i'm talking about the state i'm talking about the storing the state in the beam cluster not using the external store that is oh, that was costly for us so storing the state inside the beam cluster and now you don't have the flexibility to have two different pipeline the pipeline has to be unified the same pipeline will first read in the from the archive location once that is done 
it has to read from the stream location and the entire state has to be transferred from archive mode to stream mode okay so that is the challenge that is we are talking about now just to deep dive what is the state if you have a sense count um, you know feature so on the left hand side we are getting the detailed record you know the transaction the let's say the watch uh, apple watch probably sold quantity equal to one and the event out what we wanted to have is that um, you know cumulative quantity by item okay so we have to keep a accumulator for the cumulative quantity and which is the middle column the um, which is in this column the state okay so the first for the first record the cumulative quantity equal to one if you receive the second record where the transaction on the left hand side the quantity equal to nine then the state has to update to 1 plus 9 equal to 10, right? And event out. Now, the middle column is a state. Like if you are writing a, in a Java Python program, that's a variable that you are using. But whenever we are talking about the beam, the state has to be parsed somewhere for fault tolerance, for restartability, right? Otherwise, you will lose the state. Here is the example. Let's say the first line, the first event is coming while processing the archive, okay? Archive data, historical data. The second event, which is coming from the stream, uh, when, after switching to stream, it's coming from the real-time stream. Now, if we don't transfer the state, which is a cumulative quantity, then it will, the, whenever it switches to stream, it will give you the wrong result. Instead of 10, it will give you only 9, right? So we don't want to lose the state. That's why it's very, very, very important to transfer the state between um, backfield mode, which is archive data processing, to real time mode with stream data processing. Okay. So now I will talk about the feature of backfill that we developed. And this feature list uh, we received from PM, our partner, and the leadership. And we also engineers, we thought to make our life easy. So these are the features we developed. Conflict driven self serve. We both are part of the platform team. So we want this capability to be self serve. Our user, which are mostly data scientists and Emily, they can do by themselves not to involve the platform team and like you like i mentioned you know multiple fast iteration is required that's why it has to be config driven and self -serve. next thing is bounded and unbounded backfill these are our proprietary term bounded backfill if you wanted to gauge the water you provide the start date and end date so let's say you provide i want the backfill to be happen between 15th april 2020 to 15th may 2020 one month of period so the, the capability backfill capability, it will do the backfill, it will load the data into uh, into into the sink and it will also build the state and it will stay there, it will not do anything. And unbounded backfill, you only provide the start date, you can say I want to process data from 1st April 2020. So in unbounded backfill, it will catch up as many data as it can, I mean as many data is available in the archive and then it will automatically switch to stream. The next point, start, stop, restart experience. This backfill capability was built on top of the stream processing pipeline platform, which already supports the start, stop, restart experience. Why this is relevant? Here is the reason. You start an unbounded backfill and you just for finish one to two months of data. Now, please remember backfill is an expensive process in terms of because you are processing 40 terabytes of data. If you have your sync is DynamoDB, like for example, it's for us, then you are spending the RWCU, right? You are writing to DynamoDB, that will cost you. So just to make sure, before you enable two years of backfill, you want to make sure like everything fine. So you started an unbounded backfill, you stop the process after two months, you check the data in offline store or in online store. Offline store is backed up by S3, you can check through it, and then you resume the process. If you're not happy with the data, you can reset it back from the day one, okay? So that's why the stop, start, and restart experience is important, okay? Automatically switch to stream. This is the feature we like most. Uh, in case of unwanted backfill, like I mentioned before, you just provide the start date. It will catch up as many data as it can, and then it will automatically switch to stream. We'll talk more about it. Event ordering, this was a requirement for for our um, client. They want the event to be ordered hour by hour. We had a use case where, uh, let's say, count of um, uh, count of user ID coming from a particular IP, particular IP in 
t minus 1 hour t minus 2 hour t minus 23 hours right so they need hour by hour processing and non overlapping interval processing that means in the backfill mode the beam pipeline whenever it is processing between 8 to 9 o'clock data it should not pick up the data between 9 to 10 why because our requirement was it has to be distinct processing okay and then the scalability practically when the backfill is required uh, running it needs more throughput it needs the speed you might want to run it on a bigger 40 node fling cluster uh, beam cluster but after switching to stream mode to save the cost you want to reduce it down to probably 10 cluster 10 node cluster right so it should support the scalability not but not uh, last but not the least is fault tolerance and restatability the backfill pipeline we are storing all the pipeline metadata we'll talk about it what is pipeline metadata inside the beam state it has a couple of advantage one advantage it will reduce the complexity of external dependency right second thing is that the beam state is backed up by checkpointing so it will support the fault tolerance and restatability okay now backfill switching to stream this time i i mentioned before if you see the rectangle on the top you can think of that is a historical data for our case is s3 and the blue dotted line is at the data processing line okay so data processing is happening from cold data to is getting to the warmer data and when there is no new data available then it will switch to stream now switching to stream why that is important because the backfill capability exactly know from which offset it should able to it should read the data and why that is relevant that is to make sure the backfill capability is not doing the duplicate processing okay or is not missing any data like backfill should not process the same data which is already processed in the in the historical um, from the historical source right so there is a bit evolving our our event bus is um, uh, you know it has two to seven days of retention and historical it is two years of retention so there is two to seven days of overlapping um, so this backfill switch to stream will make sure no duplicate data processing and no um, gap okay now i will hand over to harish who will walk you through about the journey how the backfill evolved and the final architecture thanks ratul um, i'm harish i work for like stream processing platform uh, at intuit as a platform team of uh, stream processing like we have to provide our users all the necessary tooling uh, like uh, monitoring uh, uh, stuff in like wavefront and showing the log logs in splunk and all the uh, infrastructure related stuff so the main users of this uh, platform are data engineers machine learning engineers and data scientists so as a team like uh, we need to provide like all self serve uh, capability for our uh, engineers as shown in the picture as a tip of iceberg like they need to focus on only on business logic if there is any common use case or feature identified like backfill like we uh, as a team like we will provide the that feature to work across the company the main offerings of our platform are beam on top of flink and spark both in on java and python our platform is like entirely built up on like aws and then uh, we use kubernetes for our uh, deployment purpose as a platform uh, guidelines like okay if some customers are coming like with uh, stateful applications like we offer them like beam on top of uh, flink so this is our recommended approach why because like uh, beam has like rich io support uh, for like read, uh, reading and writing the uh, data and there is no micro batching available and the it is low, low latency as we are maintaining the state within the uh, kubernetes parts itself memory of that part the you don't need to like uh, make a call to external system so which which reduces a lot of latency as well as like uh, the cost as well and we provide like sdk support uh, to connect to our various internal data sources like for streaming applications uh, we use like kafka as our like internal um, we have like internal team like which powered kafka so we provide like sdk to connect to that um, kafka like uh, it will take care of permissions and everything and for like backfill or any other use case like so we want to provide like a seamless experience like 
the customer needs to use the like, same transformation logic across like backfill as well as like stream so to create their historical features as well as once it is moved to real time they should be able to use the same uh, transformation without changing their code so what what is the motivation behind like a backfill like uh, let me introduce you like like some of our systems like as mentioned kafka is our like streaming source and we the default retention period for the kafka is like 3 days and as a purpose like we store the data like 2 years worth of data whatever the message is coming uh, to our kafka system we we store that in s3 we call it like data lake s3 and we store that in a hourly fashion that means like we process like uh, uh, a batch of runs and takes care uh, process like all the hourly data and then keep it in a hourly bucket and this is how like our systems are configured and now for the backfill like uh, we want to read like some customers want to bootstrap their data uh, starting from like last, last three months or like or some part of like months or like entire like two years of data how it gonna happen is like uh, okay let's say um, somebody is coming like okay wants to uh, read the data morning nine o'clock and now let's say the time is around like one o'clock how this gonna happen is like okay this backfill system should provide uh, the data okay it's let's say it starts reading from 9 okay once all the data is read from 9 they'll go to 10th hour and then 11th hour 12th hour once the data entire data is finished reading from s3 then they'll move to kafka uh, the system should move to kafka reading reading from kafka at 13th hour so currently uh, beam like we, we use like 2.29 and uh, the beam doesn't have a support for dual source like the synchronization is not available so which can read both s3 as well as kafka so current the support is not available so we have to build our own uh, solution for this one and using an external system is an op not an option because it uh, provide like a lot of uh, operational cost as well as like uh, maintenance for that one and it, it is a bit expensive also and the solution that we are going to provide it should be easy plug and play like a customer should uh, able to reiterate their, their backfill if they want to run like a couple of runs they want to fine tune their uh, model it, it should be very easy and should be we should provide this capability across across the input so i'll go through the evolution of process of this black backfill so if you see this uh, diagram like okay we, as, as mentioned like we have uh, our two sources one is like uh, s3 and then kafka so we created like initially okay in beam like in terms of we created like two pipelines one pipeline reads data from s3 and create the state and once that is done like we try to use the same state and switch our source so but it didn't work like so as uh, the state is uh, we are not able to reuse the state whatever it is um, has been built during the backfill process so we we weren't able to find the solution with this one and the next solution uh, we found is using an intermediate cough cut all we need to find out is like it need, the beam needs one a single source which is a streaming source and whenever okay we we use like external another application which reads data from s3 hour by hour and then replay all the events put this in intermediate kafka once uh, we the data is completed completely reading from s3 then we move to the application the external application will start reading the data from kafka and put the events into intermediate kafka tab yeah this solution like work like uh, for us but uh, with this solution we have to maintain like another application and if there is any changes happen into the source uh, kafka we need to change same thing to intermediate kafka if there is any failures in one uh, another application system it will impact the current uh, application the system where the customers are writing their business logic so it comes with like again uh, we are increasing the cost and then uh, we are increasing operational burden for the customer so we will follow this approach the another approach is like we followed is okay so now we need to get the data from s3 like we designed our like own dual source kind of um reader 
where it has ability to connect both from S3 as well as Kafka. So we have some smart switch uh, here uh, we built in, in, in our reader. Whenever it is reading from uh, S3, it won't read the data from, it won't connect uh, to Kafka. Yeah, whenever it, uh, Kafka is running, it won't connect to S3. So during backfill mode, yeah, we, uh, we read data from S3 and we use the same logic, like whatever the customer provided, like application logic, it will run uh, throughout the backfill. Once everything is done, then uh, Kafka will kick in and it start reading messages from Kafka. So that's how like we were able to maintain the state and uh, it worked for us. Like, uh, uh, there is uh, the checkout times are like very uh, checkpoint times are like very uh, less and it, it, it used to take like one to uh, two minutes for like hundred GB of state size. Yeah, we currently it is in production. It is running fine. So the another uh, uh, solution like we, we followed is like creating our a dual source. In this solution, like previous solution, like at a time, like it connects to either Kafka or uh, S3. Here uh, we have like two sources, which uh, we are using flattening this. We get like either data from S3 or Kafka. This we have like another switch, like which flatten these two records and then provide like ultimate like final record set and which can be um, fed to like application logic. This uh, dual source will read data from S3 hour by hour and once entire data is finished reading, this uh, backfill reader, we, we are using Kafka Beam IO splittable diffusion like Kafka source descriptors. When the data entirely read from S3, then we trigger like a uh, nudge to Kafka source descriptor. Hey, start reading the data from like 13th hour as shown in the earlier pictures. It will start reading from 13th hour. And how we are controlling the uh, reading the data hour by hour and how we are uh, avoiding the duplicates like Ratul will um, explain in like uh, further slides. So this is how we were able to maintain this one. And this solution like, uh, uh, will take care of like automatically switching to Kafka from that particular offset so so that there won't be any data loss and then uh, there won't be external monitoring is needed uh, the, from by the customer as well. So I'll hand over to Ratul to dive deep onto the logic like that we have written for uh, this dual source. Thanks Eris. So let's have some component deep drive. Um make a couple of slides or uh, engineering slides okay so backfill io so again the platform our responsibility was to hide all the complexity right so whatever complexity Harish talked about like the backfill um, you know the sdk connecting to dual source um, s3 and uh, kafka and uh, switching the source or you know dynamically connecting to kafka using the splitable to fn all these things we wanted to hide from user. So what we have done, we created a method called backfill I. Okay. So let's see what is inside the backfill I. Okay. So here is a simple version of the backfill I.O. which has a two input port, Kafka reader and S3 reader, as it needs to run read from Kafka and S3. And there is a data output port, which is a unified data output port. Okay. So and it has two more port. One port is to read the config and one port is to uh, emit the matrix. Okay. Now, uh, why is reading from the Kafka reader port? What is doing is that deserializing and decrypting the data and converting to P collection of string. Now, user on the user application, user can convert it back to P collection of their schema or the POJO. Okay. But for simplicity, we are taking P collection of string. Now, S3 reader, that is interesting because S3 reader is processing hour by hour. And if you restart the application, if the application fail and get restarted by automatically, it should remember which hour it has processed and it will start from that hour. So let's see how it's happening, these two things. So the key is that we start with a sequence. The responsibility of the sequence is just to generate the paths. So the sequence is talking to something called pipeline metadata coordinator. 
this is a component inside the backfill IO. The pipeline metadata coordinator, it take care of the pipeline metadata. Example of pipeline metadata, which mode the pipeline is running? Is it running in the backfill mode or is it running in the stream mode? If it's running in the backfill mode, which hour of data is processing currently? Which hour of data it has processed and which hour of data is currently processing? What is the start time? What is the end time? So all sort of metadata, it's been maintained by the pipeline metadata coordinator, which use the beam state API to store in the backfill state. Okay. So this is very important. We are storing the pipeline metadata inside the beam cluster. Okay. Like I mentioned in the before. So the pipeline metadata coordinator, the output will be P collection of metadata event. And that we define some schema for metadata event. Okay. So then this P collection of metadata event, the S3 reader, I'll go in more detail. It do read matches and it converted to P collection of list of string. So this P collection of list of string is actual event. In the next slide, I will show you how the actual event is coming from P collection of metadata. And then we are flattening it up and converting to P collection of string. So if you see on the right hand side, the Kafka reader also converting, we are converting to P collection of string from S reader also we are converting to P collection of string. So now we have a common form, P collection of string. And that's why the unified data output is taking care of the common form. Right? So everything is backed up by the checkpoint and we also have the metrics outputting for alerting and monitoring. So on the next slide, I will deep down only the S3 reader part. I will show you what are the transformation is happening between the sequence generator and the P collection of strings. So in the next slide, I will show you the sequence generator, what is generating and how we are getting the P collection of strings. Okay, so on the left hand side, we have the operator on the right hand side, we have the output of the operator, which will get fit to the next operator as the input. Okay, so sequence, it will give you the P collection of long in sequence as the input call, you know, the start sequence, end sequence and the rate. So what is relevant for us is only the rate. Right. So we set it up. Okay, generate the sequence in every 10 second, every 30 second, every 40 second, something. Right. And, and then based on this rate, it will read the data from S3. Okay. So sequence rate was important for us. Now the P collection of long that has been fed to a, a module can convert to key value. So what we are doing is that we are stating a static key because we are now maintaining the metadata state. And this long is getting converted to string. So if you have four, then the output, if, if your sequence is generating four, then convert to KB, the output will be some static key, comma 4. Then we feed this key value pair to the convert to metadata event. That is the component which maintain the, which maintain the state, right? Now, if you have work on the stateful um, beam stateful API, you know that you have to pass the key value pair and that's why the key value pair on the line number 2. Convert to metadata event, this operator is talking to beam you know the the beam state through the beam state api and what it returns is the metadata of event so metadata of event is encapsulating all the metadata like which hour should it process and all these things but now we have to extract the concrete path of the files so there is a method called extract file path which will, which will convert the metadata event into the file path. So the file path will come S3 colon slash slash uh, bucket name slash prefix slash star. Okay. So in the prefix, we have the hour also. So let's say the hour is 2019 0000 hyphen you know, 0023, some hour. So the path has the hour and then we are reading all the files from that hourly path. Okay. So extract file path. Next two um, operator are from um, are from uh, BIM um, text IO. So if you see file IO dot match all, which is returning match result dot metadata, I will quickly, quickly go over these two. File IO dot read matches, which will return the file IO dot readable file. Okay. Next method is our custom meter, which is read from S3 path. So our um, the data, the archive data is in, in snappy format stored in S3. So this read from S3 path, it will take the input of file IO dot readable file. That is the input. 
and it will read the snappy file it will do the decoding and then finally it convert to p collection of desktop string in the next slide we will go deep into deep dive to what is inside the read from s3 path okay so let me complete the next step. the next step is from list of string we flattening to p collection of string now this is a way from sequence to p collection of string these are the sequence of operation which is happening now p collection of string like i said p collection of event we are giving it to output code now user can convert it to p collection of schema so i will hand it over to harish who will walk you through about read from s3 path harish so yeah, one of the component that we needed is like reading from s3 so in beam has a uh, a native support of reading from s3 as if it is a text file and it supports some of the um, decryption logic but in our uh, system like the we store in data like in data like s3 we store kafka records in snappy format like hourly uh, files whatever we are mentioning we wrote it, we save them in a snappy format so we have to write our uh, own reader uh, reading from s3 and then decode that a snap to format like as shown in the pictures like uh, in previous steps also that will mention so we get like match all the files and parts will get like uh, the workers will get uh, the each and individual files once the file has been there like uh, we connect to s3 and then uh, decode that in a streaming fashion the using a snap to codec uh, codec and we convert that into a list of strings and provide the list of strings to next transformation to be able to process uh, this data once uh, this snap code uh, once uh, we read this file like we store that in a file status tracker so that uh, the logic like whenever uh, why this is needed is when the application suddenly fails and then started again we don't want to process the data which already has been uh, read so for that one we maintain that one and that hourly logic also once all the files read in that particular hour then only we send like a next hour so that there won't be any overlap uh, that's how we are avoiding this duplicates and overlap thing why this ordering is needed is like for the features like uh, the entire purpose of this uh, application is to provide the two years of worth of data reading in a small span of time but in a stream in streaming format so that the model would be trained perfectly and one of the use case like uh, we implement uh, our uh, partner team implemented is like detecting the fraud so to give you like overview of like how what what this fraud detection is if they want to write a feature like hey uh, for this particular ip like how many uh, logins were happening uh, for the last like signups were happening for the last 24 hours last 30 days or over the period like whatever the data that is available two years so based on that one the model uh, will take some decision so the entity key would be ip address count of ip address current time stamp and then they'll see like hey last 24 hours um, how how much how many logins are happening with this uh, how many signups are happening on this particular ip uh, last 30 days last one year or few months how many how much it is happening if the model detects uh, in a real time event like next event comes and then some uh, if the model detects that uh, hey we are having like too many um, logins or signups from this particular pod like then it will reject that it identifies as uh, fraud that's how the model uh, yeah it will be useful this feature and without back uh, backfill capability like yeah we can we could have done this by uh, like reading the s3 data and then process the logic and storing this in the external transform but that, that's very costly so with, with this backfill capability like uh, yeah all all this the customer needs to do is like uh, use the reader uh, dual source reader functionality and then they need they need to provide like necessary uh, configuration like which topic they want to read from and from what date they want to um, backfill the data and our production details like uh, okay we ran this application uh, for the using like a two years worth of data and with that two years data like we were able to process like 40 terabytes of uh, s3 data and this two years of uh, data we were able to process like in two to three uh, business days like 
it's based on like uh, how complex the transformations are like uh, it takes like from 2 to 3 days and we were able to uh, achieve like 100 gb of state which, which would be span across the all the pods and one good thing is like in s3 uh, as mentioned by ratul so while reading in backfill mode like we need to have like more uh, parts like because the throughput is high like as uh, we are mentioning through your two years of the data we want to process in two days and once it switches to streaming like uh, uh, we have like auto scale capability which will reduce the uh, number of parts or like customer also can reduce the number of uh, parts based on their traffic pattern and as the state is entirely maintained uh, within the parts we were uh, able to reduce uh, the cost drastically so earlier like without this feature we used to um, maintain the state in redis cluster so uh, yeah having that one like it, it's like very operationally burden as well as maintenance is also very high uh, using that uh, maintaining that cluster so without backfill feature like we used to spend like for one use case like the uh, complex use cases like we used to spend for 400k dollars with using this backfill we are spending like around uh, 50k uh, dollars per, per year and this is like one use case was converted uh, now like we are hoping like many many use cases are onboarding uh, with this functionality and as a production run if i want to mentor like one of the bottlenecks like uh, we encountered is like uh, ebs volume disk ops so as the state is very high so as this s3 we store the state in s3 and then we use like splunk as our uh, um, monitor uh, like logging uh, platform whenever uh, we we were running like with, through high put data so we store the temporarily uh, all these logs are stayed uh, in a local system and then we transfer that data to s3 or like splunk forwarder so during that time like uh, when uh, it's in backfill mode we observed that once because of high logging volume or like uh, too many uh, disk iops so the pods are getting keep on evicted once uh, when we identified that one the reason is like uh, aws is throttling us in disk iops and we have to increase our uh, ebs volume so that we'll get like more provision uh, iops and which helped for us like uh, to reduce that problem so and couple of more um, things that to mention like yeah as the throughput is very high uh monitoring like we we use like wavefront as our monitoring uh, tool and then there will be a lot of concurrent threads were happening uh, and then we need to fine tune uh, that place as well. that's our feature uh, we are now open for q and a thank you yep.